In this lesson, we want to review factoring by grouping. So most of you know at this point how to factor using the grouping method. This is basically something we use with a four-term polynomial. And what we're going to do is we're going to separate the four-term polynomial into two groups of two terms each. From each group, we're going to pull out the GCF, or in some cases, the negative GCF. And then we're going to look for a common binomial factor. Okay, if you have a common binomial factor, you pull that guy out and you will have factored your four term polynomial using grouping. So let's start out with an easy example. This is one where we don't need to really go through different combinations. And what I mean by that is I can take the first two as a group and the last two as a group. I don't need to reorder anything. So I have 15 X cubed minus five X squared plus six X minus two. And if I just take the first two here as a group, so 15x cubed minus 5x squared. I'm going to put that inside of parentheses. So that's one group. Then plus, I have 6x minus 2, so that'll be another group. Put that inside of parentheses. And what can I pull out from 15x cubed minus 5x squared? Well, the greatest common factor there is 5x squared. So let's pull that out. And inside the parentheses, I would have what? 15x cubed divided by 5x squared is going to give me 3x. And then 5x squared divided by 5x squared is 1. So I have the minus there, so I'll put minus 1. So then plus, what can I pull out from 6x minus 2? So again, the GCF of 6x and 2 would be 2. So if I pull that out, 6x divided by 2 is 3x. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1, so minus 1. So you can see that we have this common binomial factor of 3x minus 1. We can just pull that out. Okay, We can factor this out. So we would have 3x minus 1 that's been pulled out in front of a set of parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we would have what's left, which is the 5x squared. So 5x squared plus the 2, okay, plus 2. So we've factored our four-term polynomial, 15x cubed minus 5x squared plus 6x minus 2, as the quantity 3x minus 1 times the quantity 5x squared plus 2. Okay, so pretty easy. All right, now let's take a look at a harder example so the first thing you would notice with this, we have 18xy minus 6y squared plus 12x minus 9y cubed. Everything has a common factor to start, okay? If you look at the example we looked at before, let me go back to it. If you look at this example again, we don't have anything that's common to the four terms other than 1 or negative 1. If we look here, we do have a common factor of 3, right? So 18 is... 3 times 6, I know you could break it down further, but just think of it as 3 times 6. 6 is 3 times 2. 12 is 3 times 4. Again, you could break it down further. 9 is 3 times 3. So before I even start, I want to pull that out. If I don't pull it out, then later on I'm going to have additional factor. Okay, so 3 times, inside the parentheses, I'd have 6xy minus, I'd have 2y squared plus, I'd have 4x, and then minus 3y cubed. Again, I just pulled out a three from each term here. Okay, that's all I did. Now, inside the parentheses is where I'm gonna be working, okay? Now, if I just take these first two terms and these last two terms, I'm not gonna end up with a common binomial factor. So here's where I gotta kinda do some trial and error, try different combinations. Now, if I look at the GCF of 6xy and 2y squared, that's gonna be 2y, right? If I pulled that out, what would I have inside? I would have a 3x minus y. Here, the GCF is 1, or you could do negative 1. But that's not going to get me anything here, right? It's not going to match up with the 3x minus y. I would have 4x minus 3y cubed, or I would have negative 4x plus 3y cubed. Either way, it doesn't work. So we're going to need to try a different arrangement here. So one thing that I notice is that this guy right here has an x, and this guy right here has an x. So that's a little hint hint. So I'm going to arrange those terms next to each other. So don't forget my 3. So I'm going to put my 6xy and my plus 4x. That's going to be a group. And then you will have negative 2y squared and minus 3y cubed. So plus negative 2y squared and minus 3y cubed. What I want to do is pull out the GCF from this group here. So 3 times. You have a 6xy and a 4x. I know I can pull out an x, and I know I can pull out a 2. So this would be 2x times the quantity. 
6xy divided by 2x would be 3y. And then 4x divided by 2x would be 2. So plus 2, then plus. Here, I know that I need to pull this negative out. How do I know? Because if I look at what my binomial here is, it's 3y plus 2. Everything's positive. So I would want everything in here to be positive. So go ahead and pull out a negative. So you can write a minus here, or you can put plus negative. Doesn't matter. And I'm going to be pulling out what? Well, I'm just going to be pulling out a y squared. And then inside I would have 2, right? If I pulled out a negative y squared, I would just have 2. And then plus, if I pulled out a y squared here, I would just have 3y. Now, you might say you don't have a common binomial factor. You have 3y plus 2 and you have 2 plus 3y. These are the same terms, they're just in a different order. When we add, we can add in any order, so it's the same thing. If you wanted to, you could just reorder this stuff. You could say this is 3y plus 2. It's the same. Or you could go back here and rearrange these terms, put the negative 3y cubed in front, and then put minus 2y squared as the last one. It doesn't matter. It's the same answer either way. So put equals. So now we're going to factor this guy. So this guy is your common binomial factor. And if we pulled that out, we would have 3 times the quantity. This guy comes out, 3y plus 2, times... Inside of parentheses, you'd have what's left. So you'd have the 2x minus the y squared. And that's our factorization. So you have 3 times the quantity 3y plus 2 times the quantity 2x minus y squared. Now, if you didn't pull out the 3 to start, okay, like we did, then what happens is when you get to this stage, you're going to have a common factor of 3, okay, that you still need to pull out. So always look before you start. Say, is there anything I can pull out before I start factoring this by grouping? It's going to save you additional factoring in the end. All right, let's take a look at another one. So suppose we had 100xy minus 245 minus 140x plus 175y. So before we start, is there anything we can pull out? This is divisible by 5. So is this. So is this. So is this, right? Everything ends in a 0 or a 5. So I know everything's divisible by 5. This guy right here would be 5 times 20. This guy right here would be 5 times 49. This guy right here would be 5 times 28. And this guy right here would be 5 times 35. So there's nothing else I can pull out. You notice that this guy, this guy, and this guy would each have a common factor of 7, but this guy doesn't, right? 20 is just 4 times 5, so that's not going to work. And so there's nothing else we can really pull out other than a 5. So we'd write a 5 out in front. Then inside of the parentheses, you'd have 20xy minus, you would have 49, minus, you would have 28x, plus, you would have 35y. All right, let's erase all this. Get rid of that. And we'll move this up here. Okay, so now let's think a little bit about our grouping. If I look at the way it's grouped now, in other words, these two as a group and these two as a group, the first two as a group and the last two as a group, will that work? Well, from the first two, I can't really pull anything out. 49 is 7 times 7, 20 is 5 times 2 times 2. Nothing I'm really going to be able to do there. This has x, y, this doesn't have any variables at all. This guy, I know I would have an x and I know I would have a y, and I could pull out a 7, but it's just not going to work, right? So you can eyeball that and see we've got to rearrange things. Again, I'm going to think about the fact that this term right here has an x, and this term right here has an x. So let's go ahead and rewrite this as five times inside of one group. I'm gonna use brackets here to make this a little easier to see. So one group could be 20xy, and then minus 28x, and then plus another group could be 35y minus 49. All right, let me close those brackets. The reason I went ahead and switched these around if you notice, this number part right here, this 28 is larger than this number part here, 20. So I just followed that same order. This number part here, 49, is larger than this number part, 35. Okay, so that's where I got that. All right, so now if we pull out the GCF from this first group, what will it be? 20 is 4 times 5 or 2 times 2 times 5 if you want to be technical. 28 is what? It's 4 times 7 or 2 times 2 times 7. So I could pull out a 4. And then I could also pull out an x. So inside the parentheses there, you would have 5y minus a 7. 
From here, I know I could pull out just a seven, right? If you think about 35 and 49, greatest common factor is seven. So I'm gonna pull that out. And inside I would have five Y minus a seven. So you can see you do have a common binomial factor. So we have this guy right here, this five Y minus seven. And let's go ahead and pull that guy out. So we'll have our five out in front, then we'll have our five Y minus seven. Then inside the parentheses, we'll have four X plus seven. Okay, so we factored our polynomial as five times the quantity five Y minus seven times the quantity four X plus seven. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at one more problem. Pretty easy concept overall, just something we need a lot of practice with. So if we have 21 XY minus 112 XZ minus 84 X squared plus 28 YZ, think about what's common to everything before you even start. Can I pull anything out? Variable wise, no, right? You have an X and X and X, no X. You have a Y, no Y. You don't have a Z here, so nothing's gonna be common there. So let's start with 21. 21 is seven times three. So is anything divisible by three? Is anything divisible by seven? 112, one plus one is two, two plus two is four. That's not divisible by three. So now let's think about divisibility by seven. 112 divided by seven is 16. So I could write this as seven times 16. 84 divided by seven is gonna be 12. So I could write this as seven times 12. And 28 divided by seven is four. So this is seven times four. So before I even start, I can pull out a seven. And inside I'd have three XY minus I would have 16 X Z minus I would have 12 X squared and then plus I would have four Y Z. Now, is this the correct order? Meaning can I get a common binomial factor? So just eyeballing this, you can see that using the first two as a group and the last two as a group will not work. And the reason I can tell that so quickly is this guy is X squared. Over here, I'd be pulling out an X and I wouldn't have an X anywhere inside of the parentheses, right? Here, I'd be stuck with that X squared, right? There's no X over here to pull out anything. So knowing that I'm gonna have to reorder, I would look at the fact that you have a Z here in this term and you have a Z here in this term, right? If I pulled out the Z, I would be left with variable Y's X and then Y. If these two terms were next to each other, if I pulled out an X, I would be left with X and Y. So the variables work themselves out. So let's try that guy, okay? So you just need to get some practice kind of going through different combinations and you'll become very, very good at eyeballing these things and getting the correct order. So my seven goes out in front. I'm gonna put negative 16XZ plus four YZ. And then I'm going to put negative 12 X squared and then plus three X Y. And again, the reason I put them in this order is because the negative 16 is larger than the four in terms of absolute value. I know negative 16 is a smaller number, but in terms of absolute value. And then the negative 12 in terms of absolute value is bigger than the three. So that's why I chose that order. All right, so let's go down a little bit and get some room. From the first group here, I can pull out a negative 4z, okay? So negative 4z. So this first term would be positive. It would be four and then just x. The second term would be negative, right? Because if I divided this by this negative, I would end up with a negative. So I'm pulling out a four, I'm pulling out a z, I'm just left with a y. All right. Over here, I can pull out a negative 3x. Okay, pull out a negative 3x. And I'm gonna be left with inside, if I take this guy divided by this guy, I'm gonna end up with a 4x. And of course, this guy divided by this guy would give me a negative y. Okay, so close the parentheses there. And so we do have a common binomial factor of 4x minus y. And if we factor that guy out, just like we've been doing, we'll have seven times, we'd have 4x minus y and then times what's left. You have negative 4z and then minus 3x. Now, to make this look a little bit cleaner, it's not necessary, this is the correct answer, a lot of people will tell you to make your leading coefficient for any polynomial, it could be a binomial, trinomial, whatever it is, positive. So we could factor out a negative one here 
And to do that, I'm just pulling the negative out from here and here and just sending it out here. Okay, so I'm just sending it out. And let me kind of make those arrows a little better. So let me be more accurate. So this guy would come out here and this guy would come out here. So we can say this is equal to, I'd put a negative seven because negative one times seven is just negative seven times the quantity four X minus Y. I pulled the negative out from each. So it would be four Z plus three X inside. And so this would be a kind of better answer you would say, but if you wrote this on a test, it wouldn't be wrong. There would be nothing wrong with it. But a lot of online calculators, a lot of textbooks would make the extra step and write it like this. So negative seven times the quantity four X minus Y times the quantity four Z plus three X.